Hi folks, I just want to read to you uh, Martin Luther the Reformer on commentary uh, on the epistle to Galatians and um, Luther lectured on Galatians on 1519 and 1523 and, and uh, put a text together in 1531 he writes I have taken in hand the name of the Lord yet once again to expand this epistle of St. Paul to the Galatians not because I do desire to teach new things or such as you have not heard before especially since by the grace of God Paul is now thoroughly known unto you but for that as I have often forewarned you this we have to fear as the greatest and nearest danger lest Satan take from us the pure doctrine of faith and bring into the church again the doctrine of works and men's tradition wherefore it is very necessary that this doctrine be kept in continual practice and public exercise both of reading and hearing and although it be never so well known never so exactly learned yet the devil our adversary who continually rageth about seeking to devour us as not dead is not dead likewise our flesh and old man is yet alive beside this all kinds of temptations vex and oppress us on every side wherefore this doctrine can never be taught urged and repeated enough if this doctrine be lost then it is also the whole knowledge of truth life and salvation lost and gone if this doctrine flourish then all good things flourish religion the service of God and the glory of God the right knowledge of all things instead of life because therefore we would be occupied and not idle we will therefore begin now where we made an end according to the saying of the son of Sirah when a man had done what he can, when he can, he must begin again. Ecclesiastes 18.6 First of all, it behoveth that we speak of the argument of this epistle. St. Paul go about to establish the doctrine of faith and grace and forgiveness of sins, of Christian righteousness to the end that we may have a perfect knowledge and difference between Christian righteousness and all other kinds of righteousness. For there be diverse sorts of righteousness, there is political or civil righteousness, which emperors, princes of the world, philosophers and lawyers deal with. <coughs> there is also a ceremonial, ceremonial righteousness, which the traditions of men do teach. This righteousness parents and schoolmasters may teach without danger, because they do not attribute unto it any power to safety for sin, to placate God or to deserve grace. <coughs> but they teach such ceremonies as are only necessary for the correction of manners and certain observations concerning this life besides these there is another righteousness called the righteousness of the law or the ten commandments <coughs> which Moses teacheth this do we also teach after the doctrine of faith there is yet another righteousness which is above all these to wit the righteousness of faith or Christian righteousness the which we must diligently discern from other uh, a for Hurst, for they are quite contrary to the righteousness both because they flow out of the laws of emperors the traditions of the Pope and the commandments of God and also because they consist in our works and may be wrought of us either by our pure natural strength as the sophists term it or else be the gift of God for these kinds of righteousness are also the gift of God like other good things of which we do enjoy but the most excellent righteousness of faith I mean which God through Christ which works imputeth unto us is neither political nor ceremonial nor the righteousness of God's law nor consisteth in our works but is clean contrary that is to say a mere passive righteousness as the other above are active for in this we work nothing we render nothing unto God but only we receive and suffer another to work in us that is to say God therefore it seemeth good unto me to call this righteousness of faith or Christian righteousness the passive righteousness this is a righteousness hidden in mystery which the world did not know ye Christians themselves do not thoroughly really understand it and can hardly take hold of it in their temptations therefore it must be diligently taught and continually practiced and whosoever does not understand or apprehend this righteousness in afflictions and terrors of conscience must needs be overthrown for there is no comfort of conscience so firm and sure as the passive righteousness is but man's weakness and misery is so great that in the terrors of conscience and danger of death we behold nothing else but our works, our worthlessness, 
worthiness and the law which when it showeth us unto our sin by our evil life past cometh to remembrance and the poor sinner with great anguish of spirit, spirit groaneth and thus thinketh with himself alas how desperately have I lived would to God I might live longer then would I amend my life this man's reason cannot restrain itself from the sight and beholding of this active or working righteousness that is to say her own righteousness nor lift up her eyes to the beholding of the passive or Christian righteousness but resteth altogether in the active righteousness so deeply in his evil rooted on the other side Satan abusing the infirmity of our nature doth increase and aggravate these cognitions in us then can it not but be the poor conscious must be more grievously troubled terrified and confounded for it is impossible that the mind of man itself should conceive any comfort or look up unto grace only in the feeling of horror of sin or constantly reject all disputing and reasoning about works for this is far above man's strength and capacity ye above the law of god also true it is that all things in the world the law is most excellent yet it is not able to quiet trouble a conscience but increase terrors and driveth it desperation for by the commandment sin is made exceedingly sinful Romans 7.13 Wherefore the afflicted and troubled conscience had no remedy against desperation and eternal death unless it take hold of the promise of grace freely offered in Christ that is to say this passive righteousness of faith or Christian righteousness which if it can, can, can apprehend then may it be a quiet and bodily boldly say I seek not active or working righteousness although I know that I ought to have it and also to fulfill it but be it so that I had it and did fulfill it indeed yet notwithstanding I cannot trust it neither do I set it against the judgment of God thus I abandon myself from all active righteousness but of my own God's law and embrace the passive righteousness which is the righteousness of grace mercy and forgiveness of sin briefly I rest only upon the righteousness of Christ and of the Holy Ghost which we do not but suffer and have not but received God the Father freely given unto us through Jesus Christ what Luther is saying is that there's lots of different ideas of righteousness that what we can do trying to be obedient uh, in different ways and that gets us brownie points with God that gets us right with God and Luther saying no that's the wrong way of thinking he's saying that there is a righteousness of God and that is Christ dying on a cross and shedding his blood for us dying and rising again and if we believe in Jesus who did that for us that is the righteousness of God and it's put to our account that God doesn't see our sin but he sees Jesus in us as we trust in him it's kind of like here here's you you know and and you're going to be judged and this is Jesus and what happens is so this is you this is you and this is Jesus yeah and you're gonna to go to hell if you try to do righteousness you're going to hell because you can't satisfy the wrath of God this is Jesus and you're going to hell but Jesus takes your place here and he takes your judgment instead of going to hell he goes to hell for you he takes your punishment and he takes the wrath that you deserve and here's you now you go free because of what he's done for you and, the, and if you believe in that you are believing in the righteousness of God in Christ and that justifies you before God what Christ has done for you and Luther believed in preaching the law because it was a schoolmaster to lead us to Christ and then as we preach the law people flee to Christ for salvation so in other words seek your hope in Christ and trust in him those who are preachers remember to preach the law and to preach Christ okay so that's uh, Martin Luther on the righteousness of Christ take care